How are we doing guys? Uh, welcome to another Wing Wednesday with this guy. Adam Wing. Th this guy, Howard Wing. Wing. <laughs> this boy. Adam Wing and this guy. Howard Wing. Better. Is that better? Yeah. Maybe. All right. Okay. What's How's it going? going? Yeah, it's going good. What's been going on? All right, yeah, loads of stuff. Loads of weddings. Loads of weddings. Well, yeah, it's a bit of a weird time at the minute, um, but um, so still all good. Well, so today's topic um, is a question that's been posed by a few of our students in our in our course that we do, um, and it's it's something that, that happens to everyone. It's what ha what do you do or best practices for when inquiries dry up, um, because you might be in this position yourself where you've you've been going along, you've been in the industry for a number of years, you're going along, you've got your steady flow of inquiries coming in, you don't think you have to do much because they, they kind of take care of themselves. You, get, you know, you get to that position where the inquiries are just kind of rolling, ticking over nicely. You get a bit you know, complacent sometimes. Complacent. Yes. Yeah. So, um, and then all of a sudden they dry up and you go, oh, I've not had an inquiry for a week or two weeks or, a, you know, longer. It's like, uh-oh. And then all of a sudden you panic, and it, so it's, it's what what can you do in those times to just to re kickstart it and generate some extra inquiries? But I suppose the first point, the first point really is just don't panic. You know, don't worry about it. This is, you know, that you're always going to get ebbs and flows in the wedding industry, and the certain times of the year you're going to generate more inquiries, or you're going to naturally get more inquiries than other times in the year. And then we talked about it earlier. We generally find in the summertime it's not a mega hectic time for getting loads and loads of inquiries. Well, towards yeah. the end of the year and the start, you know, the first quarter into a new year is a really busy time. You know, you should be getting a lot of inquiries then because obviously Christmas has passed, engagements, we've got New Year's engagements, Christmas we've got Valentine's and New Day. Year engagements and Valentine's Day, of course. But yeah. I always find that January is really busy because you've got the Christmas and New Year's engagement, but also if people have got engaged in October, November, they just kind of the excitement of that dies down and then it's Christmas and then they kind of oh, we'll just we'll start planning in the new year and we'll start then, planning in the new and year then when January rolls rolls around it's a fresh start and all of a sudden it's like right now let's get into the planning so yeah, you do I, yeah, get a lot of and don't forget you know we've just, it's like back end of August beginning of September now where generally you're not going to get that many inquiries then because people are having weddings they're in the summertime they're being on a holiday with the kids it's not on the minds as much, you know. Yeah, again, like still get inquiries, but not to the level that I do end and the start. But I, I find that August has always historically been my quietest month of the year, and I keep tabs on all my inquiries. I, I like to, I like to have that data because yeah. I'm sad. Um, but August is always quiet, and I think because kids are off on school holidays, family like couples and families go away, and you know people are in time off work. It's kind of the last thing on your mind. Is, is the wedding planning, unlike January where everyone's hot on the wedding. So I, t I tend to find August is quiet anyway. So I think the thing is, it's like, look, you know, first thing, definitely don't don't panic about it. Don't don't worry. Um, but again, don't rest on your laurels. You should always be, you know, being proactive and don't forget, you know, nothing works unless you do. And you should always be putting out content on social media, building up your networks with people. You know, there's things you can do. You, 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 at the end of the day, you create all the inquiries you get anyway, whether it's being on a wedding or whether it's uh, a referral from somebody else. You have created them all anyway, so you've done things to get those inquiries. So you need to, you need to, you know, step that up on the quieter periods. More social media posting. You know, you can run offers if you want to do that sort of thing. You can run. Uh, yeah. You can put posts out saying, wow, next year's getting busy, I've only got so many decks left. There's lots of ways you to can do it. Post, sponsored posts on Facebook and Instagram if you wanted to, you know. If, yeah, it, ads can work. Um, but j just the, the general networking, uh, social media, SEO, awards and things like that that we always have. You can, yeah, as long as you're always being proactive and, you know, you're working towards a goal and, you know, you are... Kind of progressing in your career and moving forward all, all the time. Should, you should always be proactive. You should always be watering those seeds, as in the venues, your supplier friends, your network. And you know, sometimes it might give you a bit more time to focus on other things as well. Get your website on point. You know, get out there, do some style shoots. Just, just always be doing stuff yeah, because important. what what you put out in the world generally comes back to you. You know, so that keep stay positive. And just get to work and just keep moving forward. Well, I will say if if you know if you have 
even when you're not doing wedding stuff, which again, you should, it's all right, it's easy for us to say in theory, just, just always be posting on social media. And you do, like I rest on my laurels sometimes and I'll have a week where I'm like, oh, I can't post it. But even it's, when you're not doing wedding stuff, you can be posting about your personal life and behind the scenes, your stories, just your day to day. It's amazing how much that impacts we, we, on bride yeah, and groom. This is, you don't, you don't realize how much that makes a difference. This is something that we're, big advocates of we you know and we go through it on our group chats with our students and you know because a lot of the guys they, they think look we need to be putting out wedding content weddings and we say look no what you need to do is a mix of everything but your personal life you know on your social media accounts it's so important because you create that level of connection that you just don't get if you're just putting out corporate you know, images, or you're just putting your work out there. You want people to really connect with you. You want them to know, you want, you want them to feel that they know you. And by sharing your personal life on your social media, mm. it's just another reason why somebody would book you over somebody else, because they feel that they know you. And we've gone over it in the past, haven't well, we? I, I, I went away last week to Cornwall, which is a beautiful part of the South of the UK, um, if, for anyone in the States. And I was posting pictures of my holiday, it was just a family holiday, we went out a week in Cornwall and did some surfing and I was posting little bits of that and I had an inquiry whilst I was there for someone who's getting married in Cornwall next year and she was like, oh I've just seen that you're in Cornwall and I've had my eyes on your stuff for a while but when I saw that you were in Cornwall I thought I'd tr try and reach out to you and, and it just prompted her to, to finally send that inquiry, she'd been following me for a while. But because it's, she saw me on so good. holiday in the place that she was getting married, she, just give her that little nudge to be like, today's the day I need to inquire. This again. is the reason why. So that, and that was just some, a some people post. say, don't they? Well, surely I can't get bookings just by posting that I'm in Cornwall on a beach with my dog. But there's the perfect example weird, yeah. of, of how it, the, the power of just sharing your day to day life, what you're doing, can make a difference. And that's, that's got you an extra booking. You know, if you didn't post that, Time might have gone past, she might have mm, changed her mind, yeah, yeah, but exactly. you just or popped up on her feet in, 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 in Cornwall and it made a contact. So, so it's it's kind of like, you know, when you when you do have a bit of downtime or you've got nothing on or you've got a day, you know, you've got spare time, it's it's getting up in the morning and going, right, what can I do today? Just you you to, know what, it's one of my sayings, yeah. you know, what can you do? One thing every one, day, one thing that's day that can get do. you closer to maybe, your goal. Maybe it's to ring up a wedding venue and see if you've got any wedding fairs coming up or you can film a, you know, an open day or maybe there's a photographer friend who you can message who's doing a style shoot that you can get on board with and you do these things to, to network and meet, meet other suppliers and have content to put and then it just, it all starts to snowball and I mean yeah. we take this stuff for granted because we're always pushing these sorts of things but um, these are strategies that if you're not doing then you really should be whenever you get a chance. Exactly yeah you know um, and I said before we're so lucky aren't we with the, the reach we have in front of us and we can just gen generally generate inquiries and bookings through what we do on social media. Mm. Actually we're so lucky we can we can do that. Um, yeah. I'm a Big fan, big fan of the YouTube SEO as well. I know we're always talking about. We talk about the YouTube SEO. That's an, you know, for me, it's always about having lots of different legs to your table. That's going to really build a great foundation to your business, and you know, the social media, this the YouTube SEO, the networking, the connections you make. You know, having your website on point, having you know, showing your personal life, getting on the phone, ringing people. Um, you know, doing all of it essentially. Like, if you're really hot into Instagram, don't just hone in on that. D d broaden and, and try everything. I recently had a play with TikTok, and I tried that for a bit because I just thought, well, I'll give it. A it didn't really. Yeah, really what can I put on that? For uh, got like, I gained like a thousand followers in about a week, but it was just like, well, that's great. But then, and then some of those transferred into Instagram, and I got Instagram. But then. I wasn't sure really how much that benefited, but it's just trying these things I find. Um, because you know, you've got all these different arms to your marketing. Sometimes you're more focused on one arm, your website or your SEO, and other, other weeks you might be more focused on your Instagram. But as long as you're dipping into all of them mm. as often as possible, um, they can support each other. When, you know, when Instagram goes quiet, then maybe you're getting more stuff through your SEO. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, hey, brother, it's like a, it's, it's trying to make it all work together, um, without a doubt. And you know, when, when you've got passion, you've got the hunger, and you've got a goal in mind, you know, and you're working towards it, you know, you'll find that things start to come to you and they slip into place. And 
you know, I have great belief that the universe kind of will show you the path. And, yeah. Um, but having said that, you never rest on your lowers. You've got to be out there working, you know, and doing stuff. I suppose the reason I think this is important to talk about what we're talking about is because when people, and I use the example of people that might have been in the industry for a while and they're used to getting a certain amount of inquiries and then it dries up one, you know, one day because maybe they've got complacent. The default for us videographers is to go, well, maybe I need to change my style of filming and my, my films need to change or I need to improve my, my filmmaking, my editing, my music, whatever, um, which might be a factor, but it's just not neglecting all these other avenues that because we're creative, oh, we overlook the business side of things. Well, I, I said well, this a while ago, haven't I? I said, look, certainly now, this, the level of wedding film, wedding films being produced, you know, in the UK and abroad, they're so good, they're getting good, everybody's getting to a certain standard, you know, some are going beyond it, everybody's got a similar-ish kind of wedding films now, so how can you stand out, you know, how can you be different with your film, and like you say, a lot of people might think, oh god, I need to get a new lens or do another shooting style, well, that's not, but I don't think that's the way, I think the way you can stand out is just by, it's not through the filming, it's not the I filming, agree. it's not through the filming, it's, you can stand out by giving stellar A1 customer service, by, by being brilliant at networking, brilliant at social media. These are the things that's gonna bring you bookings, not, not how amazing your films are. I know your films need to be at a good standard, but they don't, they don't have to be the best films people are ever gonna to see to get. You know, people just think you have a perfect film and all the business is gonna to come to me. It just doesn't work that way. But you need to find a way to stand out from your competition who are doing similar films. And the way to do that is, you know, by building great relationships with potential couples and, uh, and being great at social media, great at networking, as we've just said, you know, and try and stand out in that way. You know, try and come across as a real friend, you know. How do you, how do you advertise what you do? Are you a guy who'll turn up with loads of equipment and make it a big show? No, I'm gonna be discreet in the background. Well, that particular group might like that discreet background, you know, feeling of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're not feeling they're being filmed all day. And there's other ways to kind of shine shine through without it being some weddings like and call for that big production approach as well and gimbals and some people like that some people like drones some people like a much more understated that like we're shy on camera we just want to not even know you're there kind of approach which is what I tend to lean towards but I think most couples are like yes, that I agree yeah so I, I think that's a good approach um so yeah but again always be showing the real you well, show no, your personal you, you know you, a lot of people you might not even show anything about it. you might not even have an about pay, about me section you might not even have your face on your website but that's something really important that a lot of people overlook and it's just it's not always all about the films you're right. Um, you're absolutely right. So if, if you find that your inquiries are drying up, then maybe try a few of these things that we're talking about, the you know, the social media, the networking, the... Everything. Or get working, you know, don't just, just think, I'm not getting as many inquiries and do nothing about it. Get off your bum and get out you of know, it. If yeah, you yeah. are generally bothered about it, and maybe historically you've had, you do get inquiries at maybe this particular time you know, of the year, and you're not getting any, shit, what do I need to do? and just be helpful and be working on it and it will come to you without and doubt. What you'll find is you'll wake up one day and like buses they all come at once and you'll have five inquiries and you'll in your inbox and you'll go I don't know why I was even worried because <laughs> that can happen as well. You spend weeks panicking and then all of a sudden they all come at once. Um, but as and long listen, as you're doing yeah. your stuff all the time. Look, let's let's not forget though, it let's not forget for a, a successful wedding business or wedding film business you only really need 30 to 60 weddings a year yeah, sure, yeah, to yeah. make a great career. So it's not like you need hundreds of inquiries coming through every week. You, what you really want to get is you know, 40 or 50, 60 inquiries throughout the whole of the year that are really good quality ones that you can get and you can book and you can nail those bookings. Well, this that's going to give you, you know, your living. So don't worry if you're not getting hundreds and hundreds of inquiries. Yeah, this is why it's important to look at your inquiries over a, over the year, over the spread of the year, not just like, I didn't get any last week, I'm panicking. As long as you're getting enough inquiries, enough bookings throughout the year to get to the number that you want to get to and earn the right amount of money that you want to make, then then you're fine. You know, if you've had a quiet week and you've not had any inquiries, thank you, um, then it doesn't matter as long as you've got them coming in over the year as a whole, it's an average kind of game. That's what you want to be working year to year. I think it's just like keeping positive, isn't it? And 
and trying to come up with a solution rather than getting down the dumps about it and thinking, oh, I'm not getting inquired. Yeah, it's a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. You know, stay positive and okay. just look for opportunities. So always try and make a positive out of a negative. And, the, you know, you will find a way. There's always one there. There's always a silver lining. Um, in fact, it might be a bit quieter at that particular time of year. But, you know, I've got time now. I can work on something else. There's lots of ways you can yeah, go. Yeah, that, that's it, isn't it? Is when it is quiet and when you haven't got those inquiries coming in, that's when you should be working at your hardest when everyone else is kind of resting on the laurels or having some downtime yeah, holidays. Or maybe yeah. that's the time for you to really push and hustle. <laughs> Get the um, hustle out, man. So I hope you found that video helpful. Um, any comments, just let us know. We do. We are. We have a, our own video course, which is linked below, which, in which we go into these topics and these strategies in Low, like yeah, crazy detail. Because um, so we'd we'll be chatting on a wing Wednesday for like. If you're interested days. in that, then the links are below. Um, but otherwise, any comments, leave them below and like and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching. Thank you, guys. See you next time.